Hey, what's up? It's Corey here, and we're talking about the shuffle rhythm that Stevie Ray Vaughan lays down in the tune Cold Shot. I get a lot of students asking how to perfect this feel, so I thought we'd dive deep into it today. But another thing people always ask is, how does Stevie Ray Vaughan get his sound? Well, there's loads of videos about that out there. I mean, Fender amps and Dumbles and Tube Screamers and Fuzz Faces and all that. But there's a couple pedals on the market that I think can really get you close to the Cold Shot sound and one secret weapon as well. You know, Stevie Ray is obviously using a healthy dose of the rotating speaker, otherwise known as the Leslie cabinet. Uh, Fender made the Vibratone cabinet a long time ago, and there's loads of pedals out on the market that can achieve this sound for you. The pedal I used in the beginning is actually a multi-effect processor by Boss called the MD500. You should check that box out if you're interested in a pedal that has a lot of tremolos, chorus, rotary speaker, any modulation effect under the sun for the most part is in that. It's a really great pedal. Another killer effect that you can find on the cheap is the Digitech Ventura. It'll do a great rotary speaker, but it will also do a great univibe sound as well. You can hold the switch down and it'll ramp up or ramp down as you let it go. This is a killer sleeper pedal. You should check this out if you're looking for a great rotary sound on a budget. I told you there'd be a secret weapon. Well, the secret weapon to playing along with Stevie Ray Vaughan is the Digitech drop pedal. It's not a Digitech commercial here. It just happens to be these two pedals are really cool and they work for me when I'm playing this kind of stuff. So what does this do? Well, this is kind of like a mini whammy in a box or a detuner. It polyphonically drops your tuning down half steps. Uh, so you can go all the way down to an octave. Now it tracks pretty well. Uh, there will be a little bit of latency that you'll feel, but it's almost uh, imperceptible. I'm using a lot of big words here. That means the pedal's really good. But what happens is I don't want to set my guitars up to be a half step flat and then have to bring them back up and change my tuning and my setup. The drop pedal really, really works. I've used this on tours. I've seen other artists play number one hit songs and use this pedal as well to thousands of people and they don't seem to mind. So it's a really, really great option. You know, you can find some of these on the used market. Pretty, They're pretty cheap. So, uh, so go for it if you're looking to kind of play along with Stevie Ray Vaughan or Van Halen or Hendrix or anybody that tunes a half step flat. I'll demo this real quick too. This is money. No pun intended. Well, it's actually not a lot of money but you should get one. All right, so if you're digging what you see so far and you like the lesson, go ahead and hit subscribe. I'd love to see you when I put these videos out every week. Ring the bell so you know when I do upload a video and stay tuned because I'm often doing live streams, lessons, and gear demos. We have a lot of fun in this channel. Thanks so much for watching. Let's jump into the lesson. All right, so the first thing we have to talk about is what's going on in our right hand. And if you're a lefty, it's your left hand, obviously. So the backbone of this whole rhythm is the shuffle rhythm. And not only is the shuffle important, but how we play it with proper muting is really what I think is the most important part of this groove. Okay, so let's check it out and let's talk about how we're actually going to mute the strings and get this groove happening. I call my right arm the engine and we got to get the engine started because once we do that, we can add any chord we want and hopefully with good technique, we'll be able to get the result that we're trying to achieve. Now at the top of the video, I was playing to a backing track that is in the same key as the recording. But what we're going to do is we're going to magically take my guitar <laughs> from a half step down to standard tuning. I talked about using the Digitech drop pedal, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it off because here is the drop pedal engaged. Now I'm back in standard tuning. Most of us will be there. I like to stay in standard. That's why I like the drop because it can transport me to another tuning if I want. So let's talk about the actual rhythm and then the chord that we're going to use. So if we take um, just like an A minor, but on the top four strings, that should really help us. But before we even play the chord, what I want you to do is just wrap your hands around the guitar and get that sound. And we're going to go one, two, a one, two, three, 
and this is the sound I want you to make. Okay, so you got that? That's so important. We'll take it a little slower. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And you see how my hand kind of sometimes will I kind of get this circular motion. It's not necessary, but it feels like that's the best way to do it. Okay, I love doing that as a way to kind of prime you to start playing an actual chord. So the groove actually starts with a single line riff, and we're gonna start with an A and a G that's going to be on our seventh and fifth frets on the fourth string there. But inside of that, in between those two, is a little muted note that goes. And you can hear already, that doesn't sound anywhere near it. So what we have to do is get that attack happening. But we wanna engage it with the shuffle rhythm. So what I would do, just work on hitting one note, two, three, four. When you get good at that, you're already doing that middle muted strum. So just now prepare yourself to play the G. So we're gonna go A, two, three, four, A, G, A, Sometimes what you hear Stevie Ray do is to kind of almost, he lifts his hands up. So that's yet another part and a layer in the equation here. Imagine going. But it's going by quickly enough that your hands don't leave the guitar entirely. So it's more like. As long as that right hand is doing what I showed you, and you're kind of doing that A to G movement, you should get pretty darn close. Everything else is really uh, just a nuance at that point. Now, in the very beginning of the song, it's a little bit different than the track I made. I made the track kind of fun, starting with that E7 sharp nine chord, which we'll get into. Uh, he plays this riff for the first two bars. He'll go a three, four. So, what you're gonna do there, when you play those, you're playing on the seventh fret, and that's fourth, third, and second strings. And then you're going to the fifth fret and doing the same thing. And the idea here is you gotta keep this right hand going. So we got our beginning. And notice how I'm lifting off each time I'm going back and forth to those single notes. And if I lift off entirely, that's cool. Here, we'll watch it again. So that's the first little chunk. He only does that for the first two bars, and he goes into a slightly different variation that I'll play in the verse, and then I'll come back to that beginning part again, which I'll show you. So again, not to get lost in the weeds, the most important part of this is the right hand movement. So when I'm playing that first part, see that? I'm not playing anything. I'm playing the air. That's my human metronome. I always call it that. So when he puts all of it together, it's going to sound like this for the first two bars of the track. Two, three, four. Watch my right hand is still moving. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two. Okay? So once you got that, you're ready to move on to the next part, which is actually a little bit easier, but you still have to take advantage of the muting that's involved. Let's check that part out. All right, so let's take a look at what I would consider to be the main rhythm part. It's not that much different than the beginning part that we worked on. The technique in the right hand is the same, but you're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one. Now I'm a big
big fan of really understanding rhythm as a guitar player. When people say, I can't read, that's okay. You should really work on understanding rhythm values and understanding how that's one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and... So what's, what's happening is in the beginning, he's just holding that chord out a little bit longer over what I would call the bar line. In this part, which is the main rhythm part, he just cuts it off and keeps it going. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. So again, that beginning is that beginning of that riff is just like we worked on. One, two, three, four. And when you're doing that down, up, make sure you're grabbing that bar there. That was technically like a B minor seven. It sounds weird out of context. And you're just going four and one. And when you come down to that one, you're kind of almost playing off that single note there, that C on the third string, fifth fret. Yeah. But if you play more than one note there, it's okay. You know, the great thing about players like Stevie Ray or Jimi Hendrix or Clapton, they rarely play this stuff the same every time anyway. There's always subtle nuances. That's one of the reasons I love it. So after you play that riff on that chord, and the tab's gonna be included, we talked about all that. All of that stuff's gonna be available in the links below. We'll move up to the D minor seven, same idea. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Same idea. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. And I'd work on practicing it more than just one and a half times or two bars or whatever it is, because you want to really get comfortable playing up on different areas of the guitar uh, as opposed to in the same spot down here, because the frets get smaller and that's important to wrap your hands around. And what's cool is when he comes out of that, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, he kind of will grab, I think it's the 19th fret is what we have in the tab, and, and I'm sure he did it all the time differently. Yeah, he just kind of grabbed it and did that sort of a thing. That's another really fun thing that Stevie Ray would always do. If we go back and put the rotary sound on again. It's part of the personality of the track, for sure. Okay, let's talk about the last part of this groove where we play that Jimi Hendrix chord, that E7 sharp nine. If you played Purple Haze, you played this chord before. And this is a really cool thing you'll see in the tab. It's got triplets and eighth notes. So it's one triplet two and three triplet four and one triplet two and three triplet four. And that's actually how I start this track because I used to play in a band where we would do that. I'd go three, four. It's a lot of fun. And what you can do is when you have that E seven sharp nine, so you can play off of that low E. It's really fun when you play that chord. That's your purple haze. That sort of idea. So if you're playing it in time, three, four. Now what I would do to practice that, I would go down. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up. But to make it sound even more authentic, what I want you to do is take that and lift your fingers. When you lift your fingers off the chord, they stop. They stop ringing. And you can toggle between the sixth string and you see how I'm lifting my hand off the chord there? or off of the strings, not off of the chord. Keep the chord intact, but lift your fingers off the string. Three, four, one triple two, and three triple four, and one triple two, and three triple four. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up. And 
And actually, after that chord, he goes back to the original intro part, which is the, the longer hold. We'll put the rotary back on. Back to that groove. Now, he does it on the record for four bars, and then he goes back to the second verse. In our track, there's only going to be two bars, so be prepared to jump back into that, okay? So, that's pretty much it. Uh, those are the parts. That's the technique. Uh, this is something you're going to have to keep working on for a long time unless uh, you're lucky enough to get it really, really quickly, uh, which, which you might be. And that's really, really fantastic because then you can start working on the nuances of it that make it so special. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about the gear I'm using to get these sounds. I'm using my PRS Silver Sky. Of course, this is the John Mayer signature model. This was the second Maple Neck Silver Sky off the line. That's what PRS told me, so tend to believe them. The first one went to the namesake, John. Uh, I'm using the number four position to get these sounds in this track because that's what it sounded like to me when Stevie Ray was playing the that kind of sound. Now, if it was in the neck position, you'd probably hear a difference. A little more aggressive in the mid-range, but I like that sort of scooped, I call it the watery number four position. It just sounds really Hendrixy to me, and, and uh, I think that's maybe how he was influenced on this one as well. But let's talk about how we're actually getting the rotary speaker effect. Now, I'm using the Boss MD500, which is a digital multi-effects unit, and you know, I've never really been blown away by rotary speaker effects in these kinds of boxes, but this one does a really good job. And I have it dialed up so when I turn it on, it's just going to be the fast setting. And if I go to play the actual track, sounds pretty good. It really works out well for this and it feels good. These digital pedals sometimes don't feel like analog to me and particularly in this kind of setting. But this one sounds and feels really good. Now the the rotary speaker or Leslie as it's so um, commonly thought of um, usually had it has an amplifier with it and you can kind of brown it up a little bit and get some dirt. So sometimes I'll add some overdrive to it just to see what happens. <laughs> So you can hear on the top end, there's a little bit of grind. I can turn it up a little bit more there. So it's a close facsimile, really. But what's cool about this one is if I want to play this kind of thing and slow the speed down, I can turn it back up. Just like you'd really be able to do with uh, a real Leslie speaker and remote. So I love that pedal a lot and it's been a do all for me. It's tough to find something that has a lot of modulation effects in it like tremolo and chorus and rotary speaker that really do the job. That is a really killer pedal. I encourage you to check it out. Uh, it's probably a little more on the, on the pricier side than you're used to paying, but think about everything that's in it. Okay, let's check out the Digitech Ventura. I'm really into that pedal too. So this is a really nice pedal too. It's the Digitech Ventura. It's really nice because it's got a Univibe rotary speaker and then sort of a, a modern take on a vibrato uh, sort of Univibe sound. Pretty cool. I have it dialed up as close as I could get to the rotary sound in the MD500. And it's not bad. It's probably a little thin on the bottom end. But I do have the tone control turned up. Let me turn that back a little bit, see what happens. Yeah, it really darkens up quite a lot. I'll bring it back to center. But I have to tell you, this one feels really good too. And it's got a drive control on it right here, which is really cool. We get that wire out of the way for you. And that kind of warms it up a little bit even more, which is great. 
Now we're getting even closer, I think. But what's cool is it's got, uh, right on the front panel, it's got a blend control, it's got a depth. So you can kind of really tailor this on the fly pretty easily. It's a good pedal. They're, uh, I don't think they're being made anymore, but you can find them for pretty low price. I think I got that for 80 bucks. But it's nice because if you just need that sound and it's a small footprint on your board, you know, where can you, how can you go wrong with that, right? So let's talk about how I would actually use the next pedal to achieve different tunings so that you can play along to Stevie Ray Vaughan, Hendrix, Van Halen, Allison Chains, a bunch of players that tune flat. You can now achieve flat tunings or half step lower with a pedal. Let's check it out. All right, so the Digitech drop pedal has really been a lifesaver for me lately because when I have to play with an artist who's maybe used to playing a lot of their songs a half step flat, you know, my standard tuning guitars aren't going to work. And why? You know, can I just play bar chords and get away with it? Well, sure, but there's oftentimes signature open string licks and things like that that need to be covered. And instead of, you know, uh, readjusting my guitars and tuning them flat, I turn this pedal on. And why wouldn't I just retune? Well, that's going to throw my, my setup out of whack, pretty much. It's going to mess with my intonation. If I have a floating bridge, it's going to screw that up. So the Digitech drop pedal is a lifesaver, and I've seen artists on massive tours playing their hit songs with these pedals when they need to change their tuning. It's pretty cool. Now, I will tell you that there is a slight amount of what we would call latency that you might feel. It's almost imperceptible, I have to say. It doesn't bother me, and I use this pedal. So I, I think it's a really, really valuable investment because you can do a couple really cool things with it, which I'm gonna show you, just the way I use it, at least, anyway. So if you're playing some, some Stevie Ray Vaughan type stuff, and you're kind of, you know, into the... <laughs> If you're into that kind of thing, but you need to tune like him, watch this. And now I'm a half step flat. It's a little bit of a mind screw, so make sure you're not listening to your strings all that much. If you're playing quietly, it's gonna be really weird because you will hear your strings at the normal pitch and the pedal a half step low. But it's a lifesaver for this kind of stuff, so when we play Cold Shot, we can really get in the ballpark if we play along with the record, which I highly encourage you to do. So, without the pedal, with the pedal, It's a great tool. It's something that you should have in your toolbox if you're playing uh, and you're along with records and artists that tune their guitars a half step flat. Well, I feel like I've been playing Cold Shot at gigs and jams my whole life, but I don't think I've ever really dove into it like we did here today. It was a lot of fun. I hope you liked it. If you want the PDF tab or if you want the backing track, check out the link below where it says access to free tabs and tracks. It'll take you to my website and you'll be able to get anything that I have there. I have PDFs, I have backing tracks and guitar profiles. So make sure you check that out. <laughs>I really enjoy making these videos and having the material for you, so please subscribe to the channel and again ring the bell so you know when I upload new content. Again, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Keep your eyes peeled because we just may jump into some more Stevie Ray Vaughan inspired stuff on this channel. I'm Corey Congilio and I will see you next time.